Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to EdTech Classroom. In today's video, we're gonna be talking all about the Google Certified Educator Level 2 Training and Exam. So a couple of weeks ago, I filmed a video, a vlog sort of, about tips, tricks, and strategies for taking the Google Certified Educator Level 1 exam. So if you're looking for that video, be sure to check it out in the description down below. But if you're here for Level 2, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. In case you weren't aware, this summer I decided to become a guinea pig of sorts for a bunch of different micro-credential programs that teachers can take. So today's video is all about the Google Certified Educator Level 2 training and exam. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm here on the Google Certified Educator page. So I just typed into Google, Google Certified Educator Level 2 training, and it took me to this page here. So Google provides a training called the Advanced Training, which you'll see right here on the page. And it basically allows teachers to prepare and study for the exam. So this training is divided up into 11 different units. So first we have unit one, promote and model the effective use of digital tools. Unit two, leverage learning models to personalize learning. Unit three, use advanced features to optimize workflow. Unit four, connect with guardians. Unit five, analyze and interpret student data. Unit six, organize your class and school materials more effectively. Unit seven, design interactive curricula. Unit eight, teach beyond the four walls of your classroom. Unit nine, harness the power of Google for research. Unit 10, give students a voice. Unit 11, student agency. So the first thing that I noticed when I started to take this training here is that it is really time consuming. Now this is something that I noticed with the level one training as well. But with an estimated time of 15.1 hours, this training certainly isn't something that you can knock out in a day, especially if you're still brushing up on your Google skills. But with time, patience, and commitment, you can work your way through the Google training and leave with the confidence you need to take the exam. So this training here consists of different videos. It consists of, you know, reading, watching videos, completing different activities. But I will say it's pretty text heavy. So if you look through this here, you know, there's just going to be a lot of text. I'm just scrolling through the different units. This is pretty much what all the pages look like. So again, pretty text heavy. Um, but I did like this training because I personally really thrive in a self paced environment. And I feel like I do well when I set my own timeline, my own goals. But if you're a learner who prefers to learn with someone, I will say that this training certainly is not for you. But that being said, above all, I really like the Google training because it's free, which I'll talk about in a second here. So there are tons of Google certified trainers out there who will try to get you to take their course. Now, don't get me wrong. These trainers are very, very qualified. They've developed some pretty amazing courses, but I've noticed that a lot of them are being sold for a pretty high price tag. And personally for me, I just couldn't really justify paying that much money when a free version was available. So I did the Google advanced training and I found that it was completely worth it. I don't regret not spending any money on taking a course. So I really recommend that you check out the Google training first before committing to paying a trainer to help you out. I really don't think it's necessary. Again, I know that they're really qualified and they have some really great experience and courses and tools. But I don't think that it's necessary to pass the exam um, if you, you know, as long as you work your way through the training and you feel like you really um, have a firm grasp on your Google skills, I think you'll be more than fine to take the exam without spending a single dime outside of the exam cost. So first I'm going to talk about some pre-exam tips. So when you sign up to take the exam on the Google Teacher Center, you will have seven to eight days after you actually purchase the exam and receive your link to take it. Um, so a couple of things to note, the exam itself costs $25, which is much more than the original exam, the level one exam, which is $10, level two is $25. So that's something important to keep in mind. And then additionally, after you sign up to take the exam, you will receive a link with some login credentials to take the exam to your email address. Now, it's important to note that this exam link takes a little while to be generated. So with level one, this was true too. It took you know, less than 24 hours for my exam link to be downloaded for level one. 
Uh, but for this, for level two, it actually took probably about three or so business days to actually receive the exam link. Um, so be sure to register ahead of time if you're planning on taking the exam on a specific date. Um, so that's some of my pre-exam advice. Again, I just worked through the Google training and I found, found that I was pretty prepared to take the exam. So now for the exam details. The exam is 180 minutes and consists of two different sections. So you have the multiple choice section and the application scenario section. There are 26 multiple choice uh, questions on the exam. So this is a mix of you know, drag and drop activities, select all that apply, standard multiple choice, um, but I'm just using the umbrella term multiple choice to describe this section. So again, there are 26 multiple choice questions on the exam. Then for the application scenarios, there are 11 application scenarios on the exam. Now each application scenario has anywhere between one to four different tasks involved. Now I did find that a lot of the questions that I had only had you know, one or two tasks within each scenario. Um, Google does take all of their exam questions from a really large bank of questions. So my exam is not gonna be the same as your exam. Um, but I do think based off my experience talking to other educators that this is kind of the case where just because you can have as many as four, um, you know, four tasks in an application scenario, that does not mean that all of your questions are going to have four tasks. So anywhere from one to four tasks within each scenario. If you aren't familiar with the level one exam, the idea of an application scenario might be a little bit daunting. Uh, so when I was taking level one, I had no idea what to expect, to be honest. Um, you know, when I started to take the exam, though, I found that these application scenarios are actually a little bit fun. And maybe that's me just being a little bit nerdy, um, but I actually really like that when I'm taking the exam, I'm able to work through uh, some real life scenarios of things that I might be doing with my students as a teacher. Uh, so I do really like that the level two exam also has very similar application type scenarios. But the difference between level one and level two scenarios is that with level one, I found that I didn't really have to adjust any settings when I was taking the exam. So it was pretty, you know, pretty much some straightforward application of Google products. Uh, but with level two, I found myself needing to make some more adjustments, you know, diving into the settings of products, which is not something that I had to do with level one. Just like level one, the exam covers some of the main G Suite products, you know, the ones that you're using pretty much every single day. Uh, so, you know, any, anything from Google Drive, Docs, Gmail, et cetera. But I found that with level two, there were a lot more questions about tools that I use less frequently as an educator. So for example, I don't use Blogger or Sheets at all as a teacher, and there were questions on the exam uh, about those two tools. Now, every exam is different. You know, I had to sign an NDA, so I can't tell you specifics about the exam that I took. But I will say that the level two exam does ask you to have knowledge about all of the different tools in the Google Suite. Whereas with level one, it's much more likely that you're going to receive questions about the products that you use regularly. Um, so I would highly recommend that you brush up on your skills with Google products that you don't use as frequently, um, Google Sheets especially, you know, teachers don't really have a reason to use Google Sheets um, every day. Uh, it's definitely a tool that's used much less frequently by educators, so I'd highly, highly recommend that you spend some time studying tools like Google Sheets that you don't use as regularly as an educator. So now I'm gonna be sharing my biggest advice for the exam. Number one is, very similar to what I said in the previous uh, little section here, but be sure to review the tools that you don't use that regularly as an educator. There is going to be a question on your exam. I can't guarantee it, but there's probably going to be a question on your exam about a tool that you don't use often. So whether that be, you know, My Maps, uh, Google Earth, uh, Google Sheets, um, Gmail, if your school uses Outlook, be sure that you're reviewing those tools because there will be a question about a tool that you don't use regularly on the exam. For me, something that was a huge stretch for me was Google Sheets. It's not something that I use very frequently. Um, so I'm really glad that I took the time to learn how to use some features of that tool and more specifically advanced features of that tool so that I could pass the exam. 
My advice number two is kind of similar, but it applies to the products that you do use regularly. So be sure to review the products that you use regularly, but be sure to review the advanced features. So in my day-to-day -day life as a teacher, I don't find myself using the really advanced features of Google Docs, for example, Google Drive, Gmail, et cetera. And even, those are, even though those are tools that I'm using pretty much every single day, I'm not using the advanced features regularly. So be sure that you spend some time familiarizing yourself with advanced settings, with advanced features, so that you can make sure that you pass that portion of the exam as well. And then for my advice number three, I'd say that if you are asked a question on the exam, which you probably will be, about a tool that you aren't quite as familiar with, first, take a deep breath. So when I was taking the exam, I, again, I had to sign an NDA, so I can't give a specific example, but when I was taking the exam, I was asked a question about a tool that I've never used before. Now, when I was studying for the exam, I was like, should I review this tool? And then I came to the conclusion that I probably didn't need to because it, it felt unlikely that I was going to receive a question about that on the exam. But of course, I did receive a question about it on the exam. And so when I read the question, I immediately had this moment of panic where I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I would have studied this. I have no idea how to use this Google product. But instead of you know, panicking and just skipping the question and coming back to it later, instead I decided to just take a deep breath and read the question carefully. So the really great thing about Google products is that if you're a regular Google user, even if you've never used a Google product before, because you have a really firm and strong understanding of Google products in general, I do think that you're able to sort of use some of your critical thinking skills to answer a question correctly. Um, so for example, this is not the question that was on my exam, but this is the question that I'm gonna pose for all of you as an example today. So let's say that you are asked a question about Google Scholar and you've never used Google Scholar before. But I'm gonna bet that every single one of you watching this video right now has, watched, has used Google before. You've used Google.com before. And when you think about the similarities between you know, Google Scholar and Google.com, there's a lot of similarities. So even if you're not a Google Scholar user, you are a Google.com user. Because of this, you can really use you know, your knowledge about the interface of Google.com to answer some of the questions related to Google Scholar, since they're both search engines, they both have you know, different filtering elements. And so that's what I would recommend doing is if you aren't sure, you, you don't really feel like you're super familiar with a product that you're asked a question about, take a deep breath, think about the, you know, the just general inter interface of different Google products, and then use that knowledge to be able to answer the question in a way that you think is logical. So now I'm gonna share some pros and cons of the process. So first I'm gonna start off with the cons. Um, so con number one is that as a teacher, I'm probably not gonna use all of the advanced settings that I had to study to take the exam. So like I said earlier, there were some questions on the exam that you know, required you know, tools like Blogger and, and Google Sheets, which are tools that I just don't use regularly as an educator. Now, even though I now know how, how those tools can be applied to my work as a teacher, just at the end of the day, I'm probably still not gonna use them. Even though I know how to you know, create a pivot table using Google Sheets, or I know how to um, you know, summarize data, I'm, I'm just not gonna use that as a teacher, even if I now know how. Um, so I will say that level one is much more practical and that everything that I did on the exam I will and do use as a teacher. Whereas with level two, even though I now know how to do these things, I'm still probably not gonna do all of them. Um, so I'd say that that is a con of this exam. Now maybe you're the opposite. Maybe now you're gonna start making pivot tables all the time. But if you're anything like me, it just isn't practical. There's other things that come up in my day-to-day -day life as a teacher that feel much more pressing than um, using Google Sheets. Then for my advice number two, or my con number two, sorry, is this is just still a time consuming process. Uh, I said this with level one, I said this about the training. Becoming a Google certified educator is time consuming. You know, I did this over the course of a week. I was able to space out the training. I was, about to, I was able to space out actually taking the exam itself. 
but I still found it to be a time consuming process. This is not something that I probably could have found time to do during the school year. However, if you are, um, you know, able to create a schedule that works for you, you can totally do this during the school year. I just knew that I wanted to set aside a chunk of time where I only focus on taking the exam. And so that's what I did. And I felt like it was time consuming. But if for you as a educator, you feel like you want to spread this out over the course of several months, then I definitely think you can build a schedule that works well for you. So now for the pros. So pro number one of becoming a Google certified educator at level two is honestly that it's just pretty cool to be a level two Google certified educator. I mean, there aren't that many educators out there who are level two certified. Uh, so I think it's just kind of neat to be able to, uh, you know, have that experience to be able to, uh, you know, feel like you have a really firm understanding of Google tools and feel like your hard work in becoming a master of Google of the Google suite is being rewarded with a badge or a certification. So that's a nice pro of becoming a Google certified educator at level two. Now, I think another pro, which is probably a much more practical pro, is that I feel like I now am able to maximize all of the different Google tools. So I said this with level one, but I don't think I really realized until I became a level two certified educator that I'm actually able to use all of the Google products to the best of their ability. Now, that's a really neat affordance of becoming a Google certified educator level two. Is I now feel like you know, I'm really able to leverage all of these tech tools in my classroom in really powerful and exciting ways. Um, so I will say if you, you know, are looking to just be able to use all of these Google skills as a teacher in your day to day life as a teacher, I think level one is more than fine. I think level one is really probably sufficient for you. But if you're looking to use all of these Google tools as an ed tech educator, then I would highly recommend becoming level two certified. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a little bit about becoming a Google certified educator level two. Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, join me back here very soon for micro credential number three. You will uh, learn a little bit more about another cool tech, tech product and micro credential that you can take as a teacher. So thank you so much and I will see you back here soon. Bye friends.